really fascinating footage. Uh, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking and hard to watch just because of how treatable that situation is. Well, hello and welcome to today's video. Dr. Zill here, junior doctor from Australia on the psychiatry training program. And in today's psychiatric analysis, we're looking at footage from the 40s um, that shows some very significant symptoms of catatonia. Now, catatonia is a very serious condition. It can be life-threatening and requires urgent treatment. Uh, there are very effective treatments nowadays. So uh, I saw some of this footage and we would I don't, I've never seen anything like that in my life because now the treatments are so effective and we can reverse it so quickly um, that uh, it rarely gets to that level. Now, catatonia can be a very striking thing to see. It can be uh, catastrophic and life-threatening, so it's really important that we uh, that we learn about it. Um, but the treatments are really effective, so I've never seen anything like this footage. So, uh, yeah, let's go check it out. So catatonia obviously is a very serious condition. Uh, the cause is not fully understood, but it can happen as a result of uh, usually a secondary cause. So it's usually neuropsychiatric. So either a neurological problem like a stroke, cancers, and you can have paraneoplastic syndromes associated with the cancers. So weird autoimmune processes, um, definitely autoimmune encephalitis can, can cause catatonia amongst a host of other things. Um, and often it's a secondary to uh, psychiatric causes. So a psychosis, depression, uh, mania, these things can all cause uh, catatonia. Now in this video, the catatonia is very striking, but uh, it can actually present quite subtly. Um, I remember having a patient who was depressed and I thought they were just depressed and bed bound and not engaging with me when I, when I was starting to see them I thought they just didn't want to talk to me because of their depression um, uh, but eventually I was like look I, I'm worried this is catatonia I just got to move your arms and stuff and I could feel oh this is this is not just I guess voluntary decision of the patient to not talk to me this guy is developing into catatonia and so it can be missed or at least um, there can be a delay in its diagnosis because it can be masked and uh, no one really knows what's happening in the brain of someone who's catatonic but the way that I think about it is um, and it, this is based on the th reason th the reasoning that it responds very well to benzos. Um, but what I think is it's kind of like a, a computer in overdrive, and so you get the buffer button. You know that that's that um, you have rainbow wheel of death that Mac gets. Um, it's kind of like the CPU is overloaded. There's disorganized neural processes, um, it's similar to a seizure. In in but, but for whatever reason, it doesn't cause a seizure with trembling. It, what, what what's causing um, what the dysregulated um, neuronal processes are causing is is the catatonic features. Now, there's many symptoms uh, that can be seen in catatonia, and actually the best way to diagnose it is with this uh, tool. Let me bring it up. It's called the Bush Francis Catatonia Rating Tool. This is actually what I will use with a patient on MD Calc on my, the app on my phone. I've got it here on the monitor. Um, uh, so you can have uh, kind of uh, hyperactive catatonia or, or not, uh, you know, kind of immobile. Uh, catatonia. So um, people who are excessively moving, um, uh, people who are immobile and can stay still for hours on end. Um, there's usually mutism where they're not speaking, the fixed gaze, and, and sometimes there's really slowed blinking as well in the, the, the slow gaze. So catalepsy is um, uh, or abnormal posturing is what we're going to see in this video. Um, and, and so that can be um, uh, very very kind of significant to see. It's quite striking to see someone hold an awkward position and then you, you come back um, uh, and, and they're still holding it. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've never actually seen that last more than 15 minutes. So I've never seen a three on that because we never let it get that bad by the time we see them. Um, uh, grimacing, uh, echopraxia, echolalia. So echolalia is when someone repeats what you say to them. So um, hello, they go, oh, hello, hello, hello. Or you go... Um, have you eaten anything today? Eaten anything today? Eaten anything today? They might say something like that. And, and echopraxia is, is when they, they mimic your movements. So they, they see you ra maybe raise your hand, they, they raise their hand. There's stereotypies where there's um, kind of uh, not goal-directed movements that are rep repetitive. There can be odd mannerisms, verbegurations, where they repeat um, uh, certain words or like a set sentences, like a broken record. Um, there's some rigidity in their tone when you move their arms. Um, they can have negativism, so there's no motivation and they're just uh, kind of, um, yeah, just sitting still, looking at the wall. 
um, and then the waxy flexibility is the fact like when when you move them they move they, they move and then they kind of hold like a wax structure and slowly come back and there could be waxy flexibility where it can be kind of hard to start the movement and then they can relax into the movement um, and yeah, you get kind of withdrawal of biological drives. So they, there's less eating, less, uh, drinking and, and all that kind of stuff, less eye contact. So that's, um, the, the list of symptoms we use. It's, this is a very good rating scale. Um, and let's have a look at this incredible footage. Historically, it was called attitude of immobility, I guess. So there's no audio to this. I mean, you can already make some um, observations that, you know, this man is sitting up in a fixed, rigid posture and his eyes haven't moved. Let's let's see if he's blinking. Um, uh, but, you know, this doesn't look abnormal if you see it for a couple of seconds. But if you come back in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and he's still in that position, red flags. Yeah, I haven't seen any blinking or any movement. Hard to tell. What's it say? Localized negativism of extensors of the neck, immobility of flexors of the head and rotary movements of lower jaw unrestricted. Gosh, they're a bit rough with them. Um, I think what they're trying to, uh, what that statement was about and what they're demonstrating is that uh, for some reason, there's this resistance to protrusion and flexion of the neck, but they're able to um, push his head back. I guess what's noteworthy is when they pushed his head back, um, you know, I hope they're being kind and explaining to him that we're just going to, you, you, you can do this in a nice way, although it's an odd thing to do for the person, but it's, it's diagnostically important. Um, when they when they did push his head back, there was initial resistance, and then it kind of then it gave in. That's waxy flexibility. So an initial resistance, and then it it, it went. But a lot of resistance to anterior kind of movements and flexion. So passive movements of arms, absence of negativism and rigidity. Okay, so they're saying he's not rigid in his arms. I wouldn't leave someone in. Yeah, so that's showing the tone. So if someone's hypertonic, like in Parkinson's disease, when you move their arm, the actual muscle itself, the muscle belly, isn't relaxed. It, 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 it's hard to, for it to relax. And that's because there's pathological firing of neurons from the brain down into the muscle, contracting it instead of keeping it relaxed. But you can hear that's very relaxed. So he does not have increased tonal rigidity. You can just see that from um, observation. You can see the muscle bellies move, you know. So catalepsy is the abnormal posturing that they talked about. That we talked about when we were doing this guy. See, this is odd. I, I, so this is something new to me. <clears throat> and remember, I'm a doctor in training, so I don't know. You know I'm not an expert. I'm just studying. But I thought that for you to have abnormal posturing, you would need to have hypertonia so that the muscles are increased in tone so that when they moved in a place, it's the tone of the muscles that hold you there. But it must be a different process because this guy did not have increased tone, but he is posturing. Gosh, look at that. You can just like, you can just see how vulnerable someone in this condition is. Like they do anything that someone, 
they just they they're just like puppets. It's it's horrible. You never see anything like this because of how uh, effective treatments are. I mean, nowadays this guy could improve. Sometimes within even twenty minutes, you can see a change uh, if you if you do the right treatment, which is like a lorazepam challenge. Wow, Jesus, Jesus, Louise, sorry. Yeah, you can see the mu yeah. He's clearly quite thin as well, so he's probably stopped not, not eating much or drinking much. You have to be really careful. I think, yeah, look, they've made the point. They don't have to keep going. So um, that's really fascinating footage. Uh, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking and hard to watch just because of how treatable that situation is. Really, we, we, we can give... The, the, the options are lorazepam challenge um, or if that doesn't work. And that does work 80% of the time, by the way, or like, yeah, I think it's around 80%. Um, they do get a response to that, that challenge. But otherwise, ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, is a very effective treatment for, for, for catatonia as well. So very uh, interesting footage. Um, if you find uh, my explanations useful or insightful or, or anything, please consider leaving the video a like and, and subscribing to the channel. I do lots of these psychiatric analyses. Um, and leave comments down below if you have any other footage you want me to react to. Um, have you guys ever known anyone who's experienced catatonia and, and why did they get it? Um, or if, have you ever experienced it? If, if anyone who's watching this did experience catatonia, please tell me what it was like for you. Because uh, people that I've seen with it, they do remember being in it and it's just kind of foggy. Um, like they're, they're stuck in a fog and they can't kind of get out of it. So uh, it'd be interesting to hear reflections from people um, who are watching this. So yeah, very striking footage. But anyway, that is it for this video. Uh, I wish you all just a wonderful day full of love and good things and, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, bye for now.